All right, well, a lot has changed in New Zealand uh, this year. We seem to be emerging from, I guess, some would say the tyranny or the restriction of the era of COVID. It has uh, been very challenging for individuals, for families, and indeed for our business community. And while much of the focus has been on tourism and hospitality and their difficulty, and also, I guess, the agricultural sector, and their difficulty in finding staff and getting back to really operating at 100% or more, a new problem has emerged. Manufacturing has taken a turn for the worse, falling into contraction last month for the first time this year with a significant drop in new orders. Uh, October's BNZ Business New Zealand Performance of Manufacturing Index, that's a catchy title, um, fell to a seasonally adjusted 49.3 points, indicating that manufacturing contracted last month. So what is going on and can we do anything to reverse this trend? I would also add this comes as fair pay agreements or unions ramp up to implement and demand fair pay agreements across the country. Joining us now to discuss all this is the Advocacy Director at Business New Zealand, Catherine Beard. Catherine, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you back. Thank you very much. Look, looking at this BNZ survey on the manufacturing for a start, Catherine, it doesn't seem drastic. It doesn't seem like it's a collapse. Uh, is it a blip or not? Yeah, look, it's it's a little bit difficult to tell. We usually um, say you can't judge a, a trend on one month alone, so I think it'll be important to see what happens next month. But probably the the metric that's a little bit concerning is the drop in new orders. So they had been quite high the previous months, up in the you know expansionary in the kind of sixty yep. territory. To go to sort of forty nine is quite a fall, and I think. We last saw that kind of drop in the global financial crisis. So that's not a great sign because new orders obviously predict what's going to happen the following month. So it looks like um, manufacturers have still got you know quite a bit of stock on hand. Um, and so when you've got a whole lot of finished stock, which is up, and your new orders are down, that's not... That's usually mm. the predictive for the go forward. So the yeah. go forward could be a bit rocky, but we probably need to see what happens next month. Yeah. Catherine, are our manufacturers making stuff primarily for domestic consumption or export? Um, look, it's absolutely both. Um, a lot of manufacturers do export, and they often tend to be a little bit more optimistic because obviously if the New Zealand economy kind of falls into a bit of a a negative space, then you've got your your risk a bit more widely spread. A lot of our manufacturers will be exporting to Australia because obviously it's quite close, but um, yeah, they go all over the world, really. All right. Um, what is What do you think might be driving this? Look, I think the shortage of staff has been um, a big drag on most of our business sectors, but manufacturing is not immune from that, so Lack of staff is holding holding them back. Um, they have been saying previously they just can't keep up with demand. You know, so that's a negative. Um, and then, of course, I think you've got just sort of all the sort of noise around inflation, increasing wages, um, shipping and logistics is still pretty crunchy. You know, so the sentiment is kind of more negative than positive. About 60% of them were negative, and it was mainly around the fall off and new orders um, and the lack of staff. Right. Um, I read page two of the Don Post this morning. Unions prepare wave of fair pay sector bids. Is that likely to be helpful? Uh, it's not, no. I think it's sending a bit of a chill through the business community. Um, probably the first cabs off the ranks may not necessarily be manufacturing workers. Um, I think they'll go for things like um, hospo workers, security guards, cleaners, those sorts of workers first. Um, so manufacturing, but everybody will be watching it with concern. It sort of feels like a big step backwards, really, um, into a very command and control economy. Mm. If there were one policy or one setting that might assist every sector that has issues, 
or is facing challenges right now, including manufacturing. What could the government do differently that would help everyone? Well, look, I think the quickest thing that they could do, which is within their power, is to really um, throw the welcome mat open to immigration. And right across the board, you know, they have opened it up, but it's very skewed to higher skilled, higher paid immigrants. Yeah. Um, so, and, you know, businesses need every level of skill in their business. So I think that would be the quickest, most immediate thing they could do. And, you know, we're competing against other countries which are really um, putting their shoulders to this. We're just talking to the Australian business uh, groups yesterday, actually, in New South Wales, and they're doing a big campaign and the unions are on board and the state government's on board and they've got a big target of a lot of immigrants. Yeah, and you just feel we've decided that, or the government has decided they are not comfortable with that. Well, they certainly have a have a philosophy that they want to only target, you know, high paid, high skilled immigrants. But you know that doesn't fill the gaps lower down. So you know you need all sorts of skill sets. So really, and it makes it complicated because there's lots of carve outs in our immigration system. And we would like just a transparent, straightforward, easy to navigate system um, that doesn't put people off, basically. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, what about businesses themselves? What can they do or what can manufacturers do themselves to get through what might be a tough time? Look, I, I'm sure that they're monitoring things. They'll probably be looking at their stock levels and, and trying to reduce those Um Manufacturing is quite tied into the building and construction sector as well, so yeah. it, it will depend a bit on the confidence there. And you know, typically people look at um, how many new building consents have been issued and that kind of thing. So they'll all be monitoring that for what the future looks like. Um, and you know, I think we just have to keep on keeping on. It's uh, it, it comes down to consumer confidence as well. If consumers um, shut the checkbook or stop spending, uh, then that tends to flow through to the business community as well. Yeah, I hear you. Catherine, thank you uh, for your time this morning. I don't know that I'm exactly buoyed up by my conversation with you, um, <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure you're giving it to us straight. Uh, that is Catherine Beard, the Advocacy Director of Business New Zealand. So, yeah, it is not all um, beer and Skittles, is it, in our economy uh, right now, but it keeps on coming back, as Catherine said, we need more people in New Zealand to work and pay tax and get our economy moving again. And I was, hitherto, I always thought New Zealand, who would not want to come and live in God's own country at the, you know, with the gorgeous weather. Well, we've got gorgeous weather today by the looks of things, according to Ben. Um, but right now, our population is stagnant or contracting. Um and we have to turn that round, unless, of course, you think the fewer people in New Zealand, the better. Let's go back to the horse and cart and live in some sort of hermit kingdom, I think was the term that John Key used.